Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in to my channel where I post the videos about the stocks, the stock market and investing. I post videos daily so if this sounds like something you want to get more of subscribe down below. Okay in today's video I'm starting a new series about reading financial statements and I'm gonna start with Roblox the metaverse pioneer. So I've pulled up here Roblox's 10k statement now, if you're unaware, every public, co publicly traded company must file an annual statement. It's called the 10K. They also sometimes, most of the time, file quarterly statements called 10Qs. This is the form 10K, and you can get it from Roblox's Investors Relations website. All right, let's get right into it. So as you scroll down below, you're going to come across a table of contents here. And I'm not going to go through each and every page of this financial statement. That would require a much longer video. I'm just going to go through item one, which is the business. I'm going to go through management discussion and analysis. And I'm going to go over some of their financial statements. All right, so let's get into their business. So here's an overview of Roblox, uh, which started in 1989, if you can imagine. Founders David. Bazuki and Eric Cassell programmed a 2D simulated physics lab called Interactive Physics. That's kind of morphed into the Roblox that you see today, which is a metaverse uh, business where you can interact with each other and the environment virtually. I've highlighted here, they say that in the description overview, it says that Roblox has an average of 49.5 million people from around the world that use Roblox every day. The content on Roblox is entirely user generated. That is interesting. Uh, that means that Roblox is not paying to create this content. The content is user generated by developers, by millions of active developers. We'll see more on this below. So the Roblox platform consists of the Roblox client, the Roblox studio, and the Roblox cloud. The client is what users will see when they log into the app to play the games and interact with each other. The studio is what developers use to create the content on the Roblox platform. And here's their mission statement um, I find interesting is their mission is to connect 1 billion people with optimism and civility. That means so earlier they mentioned that they have 50 million daily active users and it looks like their goal is to get to 1 billion daily active users. Um, certainly an ambitious goal whether or not that's possible or realistic remains to be seen. You know some social media apps have over a billion users. You know, I'm thinking of uh, Facebook Meta Platforms has about 3 billion monthly active users. So for Roblox to reach 1 billion in the long term, it's a it, it's an ambitious but possible goal. Um, so we'll follow that. Okay, going on here it says users, developers, and creators on Roblox are from all over the world, including North America, Europe, South America, Asia, Australia, and Africa. So it's an international business. They're currently not offered in China as of December 31. I'm not sure if this has changed since then, but they are not operating in China as of the December 31, 2021. And you can you can access the Roblox platform through Android, iOS, the Mac, Xbox, and other VR experiences, including the Oculus Rift. So it's available across devices, which is important because you have users that have iPhones and you have users that have Android devices. By making themselves available to both, they access they have greater access to cons customers a bigger customer base to access. OK, 
Okay, as we go along, Roblox gives a des description of how many forms of content they have, and it says here, as of December 31, 2021, there were approximately 29 million experiences on Re Roblox. 1,900 of those were generated generated more than 1 million hours of engagement. These range from experiences that simulate building and operating a theme park to adopting a pet, scuba diving, creating and playing your own superhero, and more. So they have all kinds of different games. I know I've seen my kids playing the adopting a pet game and simulating building a theme park and all of that. So it's it's and that highlights another thing that I'll mention is that Roblox is most popular among the younger generation and um, maybe they'll give us a description a breakdown of their users in the pages further down below so here's a, um, a description a little model of how uh, Roblox benefits from networking effects what that means is that developers and creators create content which attracts players which then creates a social network and then players attract their friends and then they could have went on and said that when friends are attracted to the platform the increase in users attracts more developers to create more content because there's a potential for more money and so it goes on and on in this positive virtuous cycle Roblox measures their customer base uh, using uh, the daily active user or DAU measurement metric and DAUs grew 85% from 17.6 million in 2019 to 32.6 million in 2020 and then to 45.5 million in 2021. Unsurprisingly, Roblox was one of the companies that benefited from the stay at home orders during the pandemic. Now, Roblox is free to use and to join. However, they do have a premium version, or I should say premium content that you have to pay for. And according to Roblox, their daily paying users grew from 184,000 in 2019 to 678,000 in 2021. What's interesting to note here is that out of the 45.5 million daily active users in 2021, Roblox is only monetizing 678,000 of them. Now maybe they'll speak on later in this financial statement about how they plan to monetize the rest of these users. But this is a company that I follow closely and in recent quarters they've given investors an update that noted they are attempting or in the process of developing other avenues to monetize the the rest of these users one of those is by showing advertisements so as of this december 31 statement advertising was a minimal part of the business now in later on in 2022 they're trying to further develop that in that way they can monetize more of these users so stay tuned on that we'll see if what effect that has on the business. Roblox is not profitable on the bottom line. They're actually losing a lot of money here. And and net loss was 71 million, 253 million, and then 49, 491 million in 2019, 2020, 2021, respectively. So their net loss is actually increasing over the years. That said, their free cash flow is also increasing, interestingly. Their free cash flow increased from 14.5 million to 411 million to 558 million, which is solid growth. And we'll see further down below why they're able to increase free cash flow while at the same time generating massive losses on the bottom line. During the year that ended December 31, 2021, users spent 41.4 billion hours on the Roblox platform. Wow. 
on on average two and a half hours per day per user that's impressive um, off the top of my mind it compares pretty well with with something as popular as Netflix where I think average users are spending about six hours a day there so to have that kind of engagement on Roblox is impressive So developers are a important aspect of Roblox's business. I noted earlier that Roblox does not create the content on its platform. It outsources this activity to developers. And here Roblox gives a breakdown of, of how much developers have earned in, in revenue on its platform. And you could see it increasing generously and they note here that over 2200 developers and creators earned ten thousand dollars or more and over 500 developers and creators earned five hundred uh, sorry earned one hundred thousand or more in robux which is their in-game currency that can be translate uh, transferred into dollars so developers are finding success on the platform and that's important because if they're finding success they're going to keep creating more content which is going to keep attracting new users and it's going to spin that positive flywheel that virtuous cycle forward for roblox all right so let's go back to the table of contents here and let's go into management's discussion and analysis okay that's item seven for those of you following and here management will discuss and give will elaborate on the trends going on in their business and it helps us to understand their metrics a little bit better and helps us see the direction the business is going in so I'm gonna scroll down below where I've highlighted a few things and here is what I mentioned earlier that we were gonna see how Roblox is able to generate positive free cash flow even though they're generating losses on the bottom line and it's for these reasons here so I've highlighted them in in, in purple and you, you notice they they in 2021 Roblox lost 503 million in on the bottom line however 342 million of that expense was in stock based compensation which is a non cash expense that's the company's not paying their employees cash they're paying them stock based compensation instead they're giving them options and grants and stocks and things like that that's not costing the company cash but they must record that as an expense on their financial statement the other thing that allows them to generate positive free cash flow is this factor here the change in deferred revenue um, I noted earlier that Roblox is free to use for the most part and players that want to experience the premium features need to deposit money and purchase Robux and so when a player purchases Robux that's cash that goes into Roblox's financial statement or in, into their banks but Roblox does not count that as revenue all at once it spreads that out over the the next 24 months and so that creates a difference between the revenue and the cash that it that it receives from customers and however when you look at the ca free cash flow it adjusts for that and you can you can tell how much money is actually coming into the business and so if we look at the adjusted EBITDA which is which stands for earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization you see here that Roblox is solidly growing that that metric from 108,000 to 600 to 607 I'm sorry from 108 million to 600 million to 674 million and here they note that the COVID-19 pandemic accelerated adoption of their platform which generated additional opportunities for us so when kids were at home and they didn't have school and after school activities were canceled Roblox became an extremely popular pastime 
However, this increase in engagement and monetization may be temporary, and we have seen it moderate as vaccination rates increase, children return to classrooms, and shelter-in-place orders are lifted. So this trend, this headwind has actually accelerated going into 2022. Remember, this financial statement is as of December 31, 2021. And this trend that they talk about here, the headwind has accelerated and customer deposits and bookings and all of that have decreased since reopening really gained momentum in 2022. So Roblox says they generate substantially all of their revenue through the sale of virtual items on the Roblox platform. So nearly all of their revenue is through the sale of these premium items. However, you know, nine months into, into 2022, management has developed plans and they're working on diversifying away from only monetizing through virtual items. So advertising is becoming is is coming to the forefront. And here they note that other revenue streams include a minimal amount of advertising, licenses and royalties. And I imagine these three to take to start to take more importance as customer deposits and bookings are decreasing um, through reopening management will emphasize these other three monetization platforms. They also go on to talk about their costs and expenses and I noted a, a, a huge increase in costs in the year ended December in the year ended 2021 personnel costs were 749 million compared to 293 million the year before. So personnel like personnel costs more than doubled year over year. That's a notable increase for a company that's that highlighted their they started to experience headwinds and they're expecting that to continue. So that's interesting that they would take on this higher employee costs in the middle of these headwinds. Going on here, we reach their financial statements. And we know we see here that um, revenue more than doubled from 2020 from 923 million to 1.9 billion. Um, I highlighted here the developer exchange fees, which is, you know, for for Roblox, it's like their cost of goods sold, right? If you're a manufacturer, it's going to cost you a certain amount to produce goods, and then you sell it for a certain amount of money, and that will be your gross profit margin. If I was going to calculate a gross profit margin for Roblox, I would include these developer exchange fees and the cost of revenue in there also. Um, but interestingly, the developer exchange fees went increased from uh, 328 million to 538 million that's notable because revenue more than doubled meanwhile developer exchange fees uh, did not did not double so it went up by it looks like about 60 60 percent here year over year while revenue increased by more than 100 percent I like to see that that's evidence of economies in scale and I like to see that another thing I noted here is that um, the weighted average shares outstanding is also increasing substantially. It went from 182,000 shares outstanding to 505,000 shares outstanding. And yeah, so this is the result of all of that stock based compensation. So instead of paying the employees in cash, Roblox is paying them in stock, and that's diluting shareholders. And so when or if Roblox eventually becomes profitable, shareholders are going to be are going to split those profits among more shares than they otherwise would have, and so this 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 in a sense decreases profitability for shareholders. It decreases the potential for earnings per share when the share count is expanding so rapidly, especially.
All right, and here's the economies of scale I noted earlier. In 2020, developer exchange fees were 36% of revenue. And in 2021, they were only 28% of revenue. So that's a good trend and investors want to see that trend continue because that's going to lead to increasing profits as revenue grows. If costs do not grow as fast as revenue is growing, that's going to deliver expanding profits. All right, so let's go back here and then let's go into their financial statements proper up here. And that's going to be consolidated financial consolidated financial statements item 8 and this is where you'll find their income statement their balance sheet and their cash flow statement okay so here is their balance sheet and what I've highlighted here is that they've got a healthy balance sheet 3 billion of cash and cash equivalents as of December 31, 2021. Uh, deferred revenue, these are, deferred revenue is the cash that Roblox took from customers in exchange for Robux that customers have not spent yet. And so this is called deferred revenue and they account for it on their balance sheet and they had 1.7 billion of that. Okay, a solid increase from one billion in the prior year. And comparatively low long-term debt of 987 million compared to three billion in cash, that's a nice three to one ratio. So no trouble of servicing debt notable here. And here is their income statement and they go back three years. So you get 2021, 2020, and 2019. And I've highlighted a few items here. Most notably are the expenses, which are rising rapidly from 2020. Nearly um, the, the cost of revenue had uh, more than doubled. Developer exchange fees we saw earlier increased by about 60% year over year. Infrastructure, trust, and safety increased by about 200 million. R&D more than doubled, and general and administrative expenses tripled. All that had led to a total loss from operations that is rising from 76 million to 266 million, up to 495 million. So there, as revenue is growing, they're just generating more losses. So that's not a healthy trend, and I'd like to see that abate. Yes, the company is compensating with stock-based compensation, and they're earning free, positive free cash flows because of that, but they're diluting shareholders in the process. So that's not sustainable. I'd like to see them become profitable from operations or at least stop increasing these losses from operations. And for the last part of this video, I will look at the cash flow statement. And here we go, the cash flow from operating activities. And here I've highlighted uh, the trend that I've talked about already, the stock-based compensation expense. And it's rising from 17.6 17, uh, 17 to 79.1 to 349.9. So more and more stock-based compensation so we could tell that's how Roblox is attracting employees they're promising stock-based compensation and offering them stock-based compensation to get them on board partly because of that and all of the deferred revenue that they have on, that they generate they are still able to increase cash flow from operations which increased from 99 million to 524 million up to 659 million Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover for their financial statement. There's a lot more to dig into, but that would ha have me making a video much longer than this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what companies you would like me to do in this series of reading financial statements. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations 
for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 250%. Go to fool.com slash Parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.